Hello everyone, today we are going to read Thomas and Friends Pocket Library. I'm sure you all love this video, so stick to the end because you want to watch every single book. First, we'll go with Sandy and Carly, then Nina, then Diesel, then Kanna, then Percy, and then Thomas. So, let's dive straight in and not waste any more time. Wow, look at these beautiful books. First off, let's read Sandy and Carly. Sandy the Veil Speeder and Carly the Crane love fixing engines again and again. Carly's crane arm is long and super strong. She carries Percy when his firebox goes wrong. Sandy's small but mighty and loves doing repairs. Her tools fix all problems and she really cares. Kai and Sandy work at the maintenance yard. They always help others. No job is too hard. That is the first book, Sandy and Carly. I'm sure you will love that. Next up is Nina. Nia. Nia. When Nia is in charge, nothing is boring. This orange engine loves exploring. She is full of ideas and fun things to do. Racing on a windy day, does it look fun to you? Accidents can happen, Nia skidded off the track, Thomas calls for help, so Carly can lift Nia back. All the engines love hearing Nia's tales, they're full of thrills on far, far away rails. Wow! That's our first two done. I'm sure you also all love Nia. Next up, we have Diesel. Diesel and Thomas speed down the track. Both want to win, but who will be the first back? As well as racing, Diesel and Thomas love to chat. They can talk for hours about this and that. Diesel has tricks that he loves to play. They're in, it's all in good fun and living up to each day. Diesel is kind and a good friend too. Thomas loves having him in his crew. Wow, that was an amazing book, wasn't it? Next up, we have Connor. Connor. Meet Purple Kana, who's friendly and fast, powered by her electricity, watch her zoom past. If there's a power cut, Kana's who you need, a burst of energy gets things up to speed. Kana loves soda for many reasons, especially her friends and changing seasons. Kana always helps the team win to the day. Hooray for our friends, all the engines say. That was also a wonderful book, wasn't it, guys? Now we have Percy. Percy. Look, it's little Percy, Thomas's best friend. He loves rushing along every track and bend. Percy helps animals, especially at the farm. A happy cow licks him as he gets to the barn. But being at the farm can be messy too. You can end up with milk and egg on you. Being with Thomas makes Percy's day. Racing on the track, hip hip hooray. 
Wow, I'm sure you all love that book too. Last but not least, probably the one you've been waiting for the most, Thomas. Here comes Thomas, ready to start his day. It's sure to be fun with lots of time to play. At the top of a hill, Thomas leaps into the air. We, he says, as he lands with care. When he meets Percy, Thomas has a surprise. Crystals in the cave, he can't believe his eyes. He tells Sir Topham Hatt about what they found. They discovered treasure growing underground. underground. That's it, the six books that you have all been waiting for. I'm sure you are all love them. And since you've watched to the end, shall we make a puzzle? I know all of you love the puzzle, so let's not waste any time. And let's just dry, dive straight into it. Wow, this is going really good so far. Wait, I think something's gone wrong. Can you see it? Wait, never mind. Here it is. Ta-da! I'm sure you all loved it. And this is Puzzle. So here was today's Pocket Library. Thomas and Friends. Goodbye and see you next time. And Friends, Thomas the Hero. Here we have the list of all the engines. Thomas, Percy, James, Ganky, Chubby, Golden, Salty, Spencer, Emily, Bertie, Diesel, Mavis, Annie and Bert, Hockey, Annie and Clarabel, Fly, Billy, Heart Controller, Harold, Hero, Kevin, Victor, Troublesome Trucks, Charlie. This is the Island of Soda. Fahua Station, Tidmouth Sheds, Baba Prince, Napfoot Station, Gar Station, China Clipids, Gordon Skill. Old Speed Castle. Yeah. Brendan Docks. These are all the locations on the island of Soda. This is the story of when Thomas the Tank Engine discovered that you don't have to fly high to be a hero. Thomas the Tank Engine was going about his work as usual. When he heard a high pitched whistling sound up in the sky. Whatever can that be? He said to his mom. Thomas looked up and saw a small plane darting overhead. He had never seen anything like it before. Beep beep! called Thomas, but the plane didn't hear him. The plane was out of sight. I must find out about the flying machine, Thomas said to himself. That night in the engine sheds, Thomas asked James and Percy if they had been seen anything flying overhead that day. We keep our eyes fixed on the tracks, Thomas. We are really useful engines. Hmm. Next day, Thomas was determined to be a very useful engine, but he couldn't help looking up for the plane. <laughs> he was just thinking he would never see it again when he heard the same whistling sound. <laughs> this time, he couldn't resist. He followed it. The plane had been very small, but it was fast. Wow. 
Musky Puff, Musky Puff, Musky Puff, Thomas Puff to himself. It was walking. Thomas was catching up with the plane. The plane came down to land on a yacht strip near the railway tracks. A little nervous now, <coughs> Thomas came to stop beside the plane. He admired the wearing purple of <coughs> and the big red dots painted on its wings. I am Thomas, said Thomas shyly. I am Michael. The Spitfire, but you can call me Mitch, the plane replied. I have been practicing for a flight past to celebrate the end of World War II. Mitch explained that he used to be a fighter plane and had helped to win the Battle of Britain. Thomas was very impressed. He wished he could fly to be a hero too. Back in the sheds, Thomas told the other engines about his new friends. Eyes on the tracks, Thomas, said the friends. That night, Thomas' dreams were full of spitfires driving through the skies. He dreamed that he was flying with them, keeping people safe. Oh. The next day, Thomas was in charge of taking passengers to the gas show for the big fly post. As he arrived, Thomas could see Mitch and next to him was another vintage plane. That's a Hawker Hurricane. Thomas driver told them, Hurricanes and Spitfires were the heroes of the Battle of Britain. The show was about to begin. The planes rewind their engines and rattle along the runway. Oh. Thomas couldn't resist following them, but Mitch seemed to be in trouble. His engines fluttered, he came lower and lower and lower until the big splash. He made an emergency landing in a duck pond. What shall we do? asked Mitch as he started to sink lower and lower into the muddy pond. No one will know where am I. I can help, puffed Thomas as he hurried to fetch the breakdown train. It's an emergency. As he pushed the breakdown train, Back to Mitch. A dripping Mitch was lifted out of the pond. The fat controller was proud of Thomas. Thanks to you, keeping your eyes on the skies, you were able to hurt this pit fire. That planes that took part in the Second World War have to be all that. Like that, you are a true hero, he added. Thomas was pleased to hear that after a few minor repairs and a new coat of paint, Mitch the Spitfire was able to take part in the many more fly past. Even Thomas was invited to London, where he flew under the river Thames. As he looked down at the river Thames, he remembered the time Thomas, the hero, had rescued him from a very wet landing. The end. Island of Soda. Hi children.
Today we are going to read the book Percy's Chocolate Crunch. A day out with Thomas. Thomas and friends, Percy's Chocolate Crunch. The fat controller's engines love being shiny and clean. Percy often has the dirtiest work to do. But he likes to be clean as much as any other engine. So wash down so important to Percy. One day, the fat controller had some bad news. Due to a water shortage, no engine shall have more than one wash down a day. Usefulness before cleanliness. Percy was upset. I get very dirty. I need wash downs. Gordon only has them to feel important. I am important, sniffed Gordon. I am an Xbox engine. You are a pouty buffer, Percy. No, I am not, wished Percy. On he chuffed away. That day, Percy was loading coal trucks. He was trying extra hard to stay clean. But the trouble soundtracks were being naughty. As Percy pushed them down the cold chute, they rolled forward. Before Percy could stop, he was under the chute. Cold dust blew everywhere. Oh no! coughed Percy. I'm filthy! Percy felt awful, but he knew he had to carry on. On the way to Brandon Docks, the troublesome trucks teased poor Percy even more. Clickety clack, don't look back. Dirty Percy is on a track. Be quiet. Percy snapped. When Percy arrived at the docks, he was very upset. From now on, I'm only doing work where I won't get dirty, he said, briefing the trucks into a siding. Harold, the helicopter was delivering medical supplies to the dogs. There was a big pile of cinders and ashes next to him. Just as Percy passed by, Harold took off. He blew cinders and ashes all over everything, including Percy. Not again, Percy called. I want to wash down. Usefulness before cleanliness, his driver reminded him. I want to be useful somewhere where I can't get any dirtier, Percy huffed. There's a load of sugar going to the chocolate factory. We could take the sugar trucks. Sugar, said Percy. That's nice and clean. Percy was pleased, but he didn't know that earlier that day, a leaky truck had spilled oil on the track. When he approached the chocolate factory, his driver applied the brakes, but Percy's wheels just skidded on the oil rails. Oh no! He crashed through the buffers and disappeared into the factory. Oh, Percy made a lot of noise, but the only thing he crashed into was a big tub of chocolate. Yuck! I have never been this dirty. As he steamed out of the other end of the factory, he was covered from funnel to firebox in sticky, gooey chocolate. Back at the sheds, all the other engines thought it was very funny. Haha, <laughs> you look good enough to eat, hooted Thomas. Pudding Percy, teased James. Hem, said the stern sounding voice. It was the fat controller. You have had a trying day, Percy, he said. Yes, sir, replied Percy from beneath the chocolate. But you have showed us all that usefulness does come before cleanliness. So you shall have your wash down and you shall have a new coat of paint. Oh, thank you, sir, exclaimed Percy. He was lost for words. Percy was beaming with delight. The end. Hope you
hope you all enjoyed reading this book with us. See you soon on another one. Until then, bye. Thomas and the Robot from Thomas and Friends Books. Here is the island of Soda. We have Farhar Station, Tipnot Sheds, Lamford Station, Dry Station, Gulf Street Castle, Gordon's Hill, and China Clay Pits. All on the island of Soda. Thomas on the Robot. This is the story about Thomas, the tank engine some missions that come to visit. It was a busy day on Soda. A technology fair was taking place at Oyster Castle. Inventors from all over the world were bringing marvelous missions to the fair. Thomas had lots to do. Thomas sang out. He took passengers to Wolfstead Castle and pulled some very important inventions. Rocket booster coming through. Rocket booster coming through. Rocket booster coming through. Puff Thomas. He even guided a Kathleen invention to the fair. Clickety clack, clickety clack, click, click, click. Clickety clack, clickety clack, click, click, click. Now, when the fire finally opened, there were inventions everywhere. A huge robot called Metal Man. Strong but stay armors. Clink, clink, clink. Welcome to the future, said the fat controller. Thomas was excited, but he felt worried. With all these new inventions, would the steam team be part of the future too? Let's see what happens. Thomas was determined to show the fat controller how useful could he be as useful as any robot. All day long he chuffed faster than he had ever gone before. Puff, 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 puff. And that poor Thomas, look at his cheeks, it's turning red. At the next station, the guard was waiting on the platform. Watch out on the tracks today, Thomas. There is a silver machine on the rails, warned the guard. It's a faster as to thing on soda. It's probably another robot, Thomas sighed. Thomas rolled in a rolled in at Oyster Castle. The silver machine was by the platform. It wasn't a robot at all. It was a high speed train from Japan. The fastest train in the world. I am Kenji, said the train. You must be Thomas. Thomas loved meeting new friends, but he still felt worried. With robots and faster trains, would the fat controller want to replace him? Hmm. Thomas, look! Giggled the Kenji. A flying car buzzed right over Thomas. <laughs> Farther down the platform, Thomas didn't notice two men carrying the box of plants. The men started to climb into Kenji's cab. The fat controller let out a shout. Thieves! He cried. Those men have stolen the blueprints for the flying car. Thomas, help! Kenji shouted. But it was too late. The Thieves shot off down the track in Kenji. Thomas knew he could never catch up with the fastest train in the world by himself. But he had an idea. 
and he needed the help of the missions. Thomas coupled up the rocket booster and whoosh! The rocket rode into life and pushed Thomas faster, 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 faster. Must catch up, must catch up, must catch up. Thomas puffed. The sparks whizzed up from Thomas's wheels. Thomas was uncoupled from the rocket truck and over to Kenji. The single person changed the points. And all at once, Thomas was in front of Kenji. Screech! Kenji got to the stop. Quick as a flash, the thieves escaped with the plants. They got away of Thomas. Hang on, what's that noise? Click, clack, click, click. It was Petal Man. <gasps> And the fat controller. The giant robot was holding the thieves up in the air. Thomas and the robot saved the day. The machines are much stronger and faster than me, said Thomas. Maybe they are the future of soda. Oh, no, I would never replace my engines, said the fat controller. Team engines are the greatest invention of all the time, he added. Thomas blushed from boiler to puffer. He didn't need to worry about robots or foster trains. Soda would always need the steam team. But Thomas had to admit, Robots could be really useful too. Beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. The Island of Soda. The end, Thomas and the robot. Percy, the cheeky little engine. Percy is Soda's number six engine. He shuns trucks and carries bricks. He may be small, but he works hard, puffing to and from the Yard. Good morning, Percy. His times are ahead and his doom is good. He has always does as he is told. Four green wheels are all he needs to help his engine reach top speeds. Gordon, James and Henry too think there are things that he can't do. But Percy always proves them wrong. Because little engines can be strong. When all of Percy's work is done, it's time to have some fun. The journey Percy loves the most is puffing to and from the coast. Harold flew over the rails below. He teased Percy. He was so slow. Percy smiled and said, let's race. And steamed home 
quickly in first place. Hmm. One day, Pesley had rotten luck. He worried that he might get stuck. Straight ahead, there was a flood. Oh, it didn't do his wheel much good. But Percy bravely pulled his string until they reached to dry land again. We did it, Percy, his driver said. And they headed home to the engine shed. And sometimes things don't go as planned. Thomas puffs to lend a hand. Then down the track, they chaff together. Thomas and Percy, best friends forever. Every engine on soda knows it's not about how fast or what really is big. There are jobs for all engines, small or big. It's Percy, the number six engine on the soda, the cheeky little engine. The end. Hi children, today we are going to read the book, Percy's Chocolate Crunch. A day out with Thomas. Thomas and friends, Percy's Chocolate Crunch. The fat controller's engines love being shiny and clean. Percy often has the dirtiest work to do, but he likes to be clean as much as any other engine. So washdowns are important to Percy. One day, the fat controller had some bad news. Due to a water shortage, no engine shall have more than one washdown a day. Usefulness before cleanliness. Percy was upset. I can very dirty. I need washdowns. Gordon only has them to feel important. I am important, sniffed Gordon. I am an x engine. You are a pouty buffer, Percy. No, I'm not, wished Percy. On he chuffed away. That day, Percy was loading coal trucks. He was trying extra hard to stay clean, but the trouble sound tracks were being naughty. As Percy pushed them down the coal chute, they rolled forward. Before Percy could stop, he was under the chute. Cold dust blew everywhere. Oh no! coughed Percy. I'm filthy! Percy felt awful, but he knew he had to carry on. On the way to Brandon Docks, the troublesome trucks teased poor Percy even more. Clickety clack, don't look back. Dirty Percy is on our track. Be quiet. Percy snapped. When Percy arrived at the docks, he was very upset. From now on, I'm only doing work where I won't get dirty, he said briefing the trucks into a siding. Harold, the helicopter was delivering medical supplies to the dogs. There was a big pile of cinders and ashes next to him. Just as Percy passed by, Harold took off. He blew cinders and ashes all over everything, including Percy. Not again, Percy called. I want to wash down. Usefulness before cleanliness. His driver reminded him. I want to be useful somewhere where I can't get any dirtier, Percy huffed. There's a load of sugar going to the chocolate factory. We could take the sugar trucks. Sugar, said Percy. That's nice and clean. Percy was pleased, but he didn't know that earlier that day, a leaky truck had spilled oil on the track. When he approached the chocolate factory, his driver applied the brakes, but 
Percy's wheels just skidded on the oil rails. Oh no! He crashed through the buffers and disappeared into the factory. Oh, Percy made a lot of noise but the only thing he crashed into was a big tub of chocolate. Yuck! I have never been this dirty. As he steamed out of the other end of the factory, he was covered from funnel to firebox in sticky gooey chocolate. Back at the sheds, all the other engines thought it was very funny. Haha, <laughs> you look good enough to eat, quoted Thomas. Pudding Percy, teased James. Hey, said the stern sounding voice. It was the fat controller. You have had a trying day, Percy, he said. Yes, sir, replied Percy from beneath the chocolate. But you have showed us all that usefulness does come before cleanliness. So you shall have your wash down and you shall have a new coat of paint. Oh, thank you, sir, exclaimed Percy. He was lost for words. Percy was beaming with delight. The end. Hope you all enjoyed reading this book with us. See you soon on another one. Until then, bye. We are going to see the book Thomas and Friends on Misty Island. Oh, looks like Thomas is getting stuck somewhere. Let's go and see what happens. Thomas and Friends on Misty Island. One day, Thomas and Edward had a special job. The mayor needed them to fetch Jobby Wood from Misty Island. You will need our help, Bash, said Bash and Dash. The lock loaders can be naughty. That's right, added Ferdinand. Hmm. Do you think Thomas listened? No. And Thomas had been to Misty Island before and he thought he knew all about it. He didn't need their help. Thomas showed Edward around the island. Then he led the way to the Shake Shake Bridge. The logging station was just on the other side. As they crossed the bridge, it wibbled and wobbled under their wheels. Edward was scared. He stopped halfway across and wouldn't budge. Don't worry, Edward, said Thomas. I will fetch the logs. Then we can take them back to Soda straight away. Thomas looks like still enthusiastic, isn't it? Let's see whether he needs help or not. Oh, the naughty log loader, oh, Wheezy, picked up some Joby logs instead of putting on them onto Thomas' truck. He rolled and hurled them up into the air and the logs flew everywhere. Oh, that's not nice. Look at the logs. It spilled all over. It even fell closer to the Edward. Blissing boilers cried Edward. The logs flew towards him, bounced to him off his cab and made the shake shake bridge shake even more. He was more scared than ever. Oh. I think Thomas needs help. He needs to admit it. As Wheezy throw more logs around Bash, Dash and Perrin and Puffin. Wow. It looks like you need our help now, said Dash and Dash. That's right, said Ferdinand. Thomas still thought he didn't need help, so he rolled away again. Mm, that's really not nice, Thomas. You should take help and make job easy. Isn't it? Thomas chuffed over to Heeha, the other log loader, but Heeha was feeling too ill to work. Oh no. Just then James arrived with a fat controller. Heeha wished and wished and then coughed back smoke all over them. Oh, I think the fat controller is going to get cross now. Thomas? Boom, the fat controller. 
Logs are flying everywhere. Edward won't move. And you are late with your delivery. Mm, sorry, sir. I thought I didn't need help. Now I will make things right. Mm. Thomas found Bash, Dash and Ferdinand. I think I can't do this alone. Can you guys please help me? Oh, sure. Please follow what we say, said Buff and Dash. That's right, said Funny Nand as usual. They steamed back and to the went to the logging station. First, the three locomotives pushed Edward across the Shake Shake Bridge. Next, they oiled the heat on joints to make him feel better. They caught on the logs that the OEVZ threw in the air. Soon, all the trucks were piled high with jobby wood. Wow, that's really quick. I think together they made the job very quicker. When the five engines delivered the word, the fat controller said, You are all very useful engines. Yes, we make a great team. Said all the five, isn't it? I think when you are a team, you get the job done quicker and more efficient. We can help each other and work as a team. Beep, 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 beep. Bye from Thomas. See you all on the next book. Bye bye. Today we are going to read 10 Little Engines from Thomas and Friends books. Count to 10 with Thomas and Friends children. Hmm. 10 Little Engines Living on Soda Enjoying Fun and Adventures Galore Nine little engines straining at the weight. Poof! Hiss! Goodbye, peeps Rosie. Now there are eight. Eight little engines due in at eleven. Splish, splash. Goodbye, peeps. Hello. Now there are Seven. Seven little engines, one in a fix. Oops, bump. Goodbye, peeps Rebecca. Now there are six. Six little engines are quick to arrive. Two, two. Goodbye, peeps James. Now there are five. Five little engines going to the show. Goodbye. Peeps Emily. Epi. Now there are four. Four little engines happy as can be. Moo. Goodbye. Peeps Percy. Bye. Now there are three. Three little engines heading to the zoo. Goodbye. Peeps Nia. Oh. Ooh. Now there are two. Two little engines. Their hard work is done. Goodbye. Peeps Gordon. Now there is one. One little engine has come so far. He wonders where all his engine friends are. Ten little engines all back in the shed. Good night everyone. Time to go to bed. Hope you had fun. Counting backwards from ten to one. See you soon. Bye-bye. Please subscribe to our channel to watch more videos. We are going to read Thomas and Friends. Learn to count with Thomas. Um, do you remember the numbers? Yeah. 1. Thomas. 2. Edward. 3. Henry. 4. Gordon 
5 James 6 Percy 7 Toby 8 Doug 9 Donald 10 Douglas Thomas is number 1 Can you see one kite in the sky? Edward is number 2 Two birds flying past. Henry is number three. Three leaves blowing about. Gordon is number four. Four bags at the station. James is number five. Five cows looking at James. Percy is number six. Six ducks splashing around. Toby is number seven. Seven boats in the sea. Duck is number eight. Eight flowers on the hill. Donald is number nine. Nine sheep running around. Douglas is number ten. Ten stars shining in the sky. There are lots of things to count in this picture. Can you find one farmer? Three cows. Four engines. Six flowers. Eight sheep. Ten butterflies. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And we are going to see the book Thomas and Friends on Misty Island. Oh, looks like Thomas is getting stuck somewhere. Let's go and see what happens. Thomas and friends on Misty Island. One day, Thomas and Edward had a special job. The mayor needed them to fetch jobby wood from Misty Island. You will need a your other help, Bash said. Bash and Dash. The lock loaders can be naughty. That's right, added Ferdinand. Hmm. Do you think Thomas listened? No. When Thomas had been to Misty Island before and he thought he knew all about it. He didn't need their help. Thomas showed Edward around the island. Then he led the way to the Shake Shake Bridge. The logging station was just on the other side. As they crossed the bridge, it wibbled and wobbled under their wings. Edward was scared. He stopped halfway across and wouldn't budge. Don't worry, Edward, said Thomas. I will fetch the logs. Then we can take them back to Soda straight away. Thomas looks like still enthusiastic, isn't it? Let's see whether he needs help or not. Oh, the naughty log loader, oh, Wheezy, picked up some joby logs. Instead of putting on them onto Thomas' truck, he whirled and hurled them up into the air and the logs flew everywhere. Oh, that's not nice. Look at the logs. It spilled all over. It even fell closer to the Edward. Blissing, boiler, cried Edward. The logs flew towards him, bounced him off his cab and made the shake-shake bridge shake even more. 
He was more scared than ever. Oh. I think Thomas needs help. He needs to admit it. As oh, Weezy throw more rocks around Dash, Dash and Perry and Puff Rain. Wow. It looks like you need our help now, said Dash and Dash. That's right, said Ferdinand. Thomas still thought he didn't need help, so he rolled away again. Mm, that's really not nice, Thomas. You should take help and make job easy. It's been great. Thomas chuffed over to Heeha, the other log loader, but Heeha was feeling too ill to work. Oh no. Just then, James arrived with a fat controller. He ha wished and wished and then coughed back smoke all over them. Oh, I think the fat controller is going to get cost now. Thomas, boom, the fat controller. Logs are flying everywhere. Edward won't move and you are late with your delivery. Mm, sorry, sir. I thought I didn't need help. Now I will make things right. Hmm. Thomas found Bash, Dash and Ferdinand. I think I can't do this alone. Can you guys please help me? Oh, sure. Please follow what we say, said Buff and Dash. That's right, said Funny Nand as usual. They steamed back and to the went to the logging station. First, the three locomotives pushed Edward across the Shake Shake Bridge. Next, they oiled the Heehaw's joints to make him feel better. They caught on the logs that OEVZ threw in the air. Soon, all the trucks were piled high with Jobby Wood. Wow, that's really quick. I think together they made the job very quicker. When the five engines delivered the word, the fat controller said, You are all very useful engines. Yes, we make a great team. Said all the five, isn't it? I think when you are a team, you get the job done quicker and more efficient. We can help each other and work as a team. Beep, 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 beep. Bye. From Thomas. See you all on the next book. Bye bye. Let's read Thomas and Friends. Thomas blasts off. All engines ready for adventure. One early morning, engine stick mud sheds were woken up by loud revolving and whooshing noises. Today is the big rocket launch. Thomas cried excitedly. Who wants to come with me to see it take it off? Count us in, shouted the other engines. Three, two, one. Blast off, beat Thomas. Follow me. As the excited engines approached Knapford Station, they saw the large grey tip of the rocket poking above the station building. But as they pulled into the station yard, the engines could see that the rocket was in pieces. Oh no, said Pierce, the rocket fell apart. Don't worry, chuckled Gordon as he chucked over to the group. The rocket is too big to bring to the launch site at all once, so we have to take it in pieces. You mean uh, we get to help deliver the rocket? asked Thomas. Yes, said Gordon. We can take one piece each. I will take the nose cone because it's very fragile. I will take the satellite, said Percy. It lets you beam signals down to earth. I will take the shell. It is the body of the rocket. Toot! At least some awesome. Great, Mia. But what can I take? asked Thomas. All that is left is this, this tiny cube. I wanted to deliver something big and important. That's the rocket's battery, said Gordon. It's a very important part. The sky filled with grey clouds. 
Let's go, said Gordon. The rocket can't launch in the rain. Can you help me hitting that switch? Then we can go around the tunnel, said Nia. Thomas raised up the hill to push the switch. Mission complete. Both engines moved off around the tunnel. Down at the docks, the exhausted engines crowded around the launch pad. As Cranky the crane began to assemble the rocket. This is out of this world, said Thomas. Where is your piece of the rocket, Thomas? grumbled Cranky. Unless you bring the battery, this rocket won't be going anywhere. I'll get it now, said Thomas. I'll be back faster than you can say. Sonic boom! Thomas raced back down the tracks towards Nafford Station. Starship Thomas scanned the galaxy for signs of alien life. Oh no, Kana, do you need any help? Asked Thomas as he searched, screeched to a halt beside Kana, who was stuck in the mud. Starship Thomas to the rescue, cried Thomas. I will give you a rocket boost. Three, two, one, push! Thanks, Thomas. Kana said as she sped off, the, sped off towards the dogs. The wind was blowing hard as Thomas continued to race towards Knapford Station. A tree had blown over and Gordon was stopped on the track up ahead. Sandy and Carrie appeared alongside Gordon. Oh no, cried Sandy. Gordon's coupler is broken. There is no time to fix it, said Gordon. Thomas, can you take the nose cone for me? Thomas grinned at me. Take the most important part? Absolutely, he shouted. the dog, Cranky lifted the nose cone and lifted it in place at the top of the rocket. I got to deliver something important after all, said Thomas. And where is the battery? asked Cranky. The rocket can't take off without it. Controls the steering. Every piece is important. Suddenly the sky lit up with lightning. Oh, bolts, it's going to rain and the launch will be ruined, cried Diesel. I'll go at super light speed and I can get the battery in time, said Thomas. The sky was now dark with storm clouds. I don't think I'm going to make it, even at super light speed, said Thomas. Then it's a good thing that your friend is the fastest train on soda, said Kana, pulling up behind Thomas. This time I'm going to give you a rocket boost. Whoosh! Beep, 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 said, here comes, said Thomas, with the battery safely on board. He had nearly reached the docks when a strong gust of wind blew some rocks onto the tracks. Oh no, moon rocks, cried Thomas. He hit the rocks and cartwheeled through the air. And landed with a crash in front of the launch pad. The rocket battery flew off the flatbed car and... So soaked through the sky. The battery hit the side of the rocket and clank, bank, blink dropped into the battery slot. 
Hooray! Cheer the old engines. Rain! Cried Percy as a few drops hit the ground. Quick! Hit the countdown button. Shouted Diesel. Krana whizzed over to the button and hit it. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! All the engines looked up. The rocket was now a tiny speck against the moon. Who knew something so small would be so cool, said Sandy. I guess everyone's job was important, said Thomas. No matter how big or small, rocket testic. Bye, see you in another book. We are going to see the book, Thomas and Friends, Ace for the Soda Cup. All engines, ready for adventures. It was the day of the Soda Cup race. Kana was looking at the race poster when Thomas, Mia and Percy pulled up alongside. I wish I was fast like you, Kana, so I could race for the Soda Cup, said Thomas. Later that morning, all the race teams began to arrive. Thomas was excited when he spotted two brightly painted engines gleaming in the sunlight. There is Riff and Jiff, he cried. They won the Around the World race last year. Kana was going to race with Kenji. Thomas offered to show the pair the race coat. Peep peep. The engines rattled down the winding track of the famous Cannibal Curve. Oh no, Kana was going too fast. Kenji used his speed to catch up to the runaway train. Just as Kana was about to lose control, he coupled to the back of the engine and slammed on his brakes. Screech! The wheels shrieked and sparks flew as the train slowed down and shuddered to a halt. But the damage had been done already. The metal of Kenji's fender crumpled in front of him. At the maintenance yard, Sandy had bad news, bad news for Kenji. A new fender would take weeks to arrive. At that moment, Diesel, Farona and Federica rolled into the yard too. Oh, guess you are both out of the race. They sneered. Not that we care who we beat. I am not out of the race yet, Kana replied. Thomas will race with me. Thomas Watson's show sure. What if he wasn't fast enough? And what if he lost the cargo they would have to carry in the race? The only way was for Thomas and Kana to work as a team. The others helped them. They practiced and practiced. But it was not easy. The engines had different strengths and different speeds. They had to learn how to work together. Thomas and Kana were finally getting somewhere with their training. When Farona and Frederica wound up beside Kana and teased her for going slowly. <coughs> Annoyed and upset, she agreed to race down Cannonball Curve to prove them wrong. Thomas watched in alarm as the three engines raced neck and neck towards a sharp bend on the canyon. Suddenly, Farona and Frederico slammed on their brakes, but Kana didn't break quickly enough. She sailed over the tracks and skipped through the mud. Farona and Frederico laughed. Better luck next time.
The next day, Thomas and Kana lifted up at the race start. Toot toot, they were off. Farona and Fredrika took on early bed. Fifth and Jif were close behind them, but Thomas and Kana were at the back. Taxi was watching the race from the top of a cliff. He saw a truck wobble and its boxes all onto the track in front of Thomas and Kana. What could he do to warn his friends? He sent up a smoke signal just in time. Thomas and Kana were able to avoid the fallen boxes. Next, Thomas and Kana walked as a team to take a shortcut across the rickety bridge, carrying a freight car full of hay. They were making good time as they headed into the old mine. On the right above, Kana spotted Riff and Jeff. A yeah, piece of track was missing around and they were stuck. Do you need any help? Thomas called out. But Riff and Jeff shook their heads. You two just go on, go on and win that cup. Jeff tooted back. Farona and Frederica didn't want Thomas and Kana to win. Once they had safely crossed the drawbridge, the pair broke the signal box and left behind their freight car full of ice cream. The drawbridge was stuck open. Diesel, who had seen Farona and Frederica cheat, told Percy and Nia what they had done. With his friend's help, he managed to shout to Thomas and Kana to warn them. But they were going too fast to stop. Thomas could see bulls showed the barge approaching the drawbridge. He knew just what to do. Together, Kana and Thomas coupled with a frozen freight car and used Bullstrode as a bridge to cross to the bank on the other side. Thomas and Kana raced on. They were catching up to Farona and Frederico. They are about to pass as shouted Farona, go faster. The pair hurtled down the cannibal car. At the final moment, Tama and Kana hit their brakes, but Farona and Frederica didn't stop in time. They come off the tracks and could only watch as Thomas and Kana zoomed past, ice cream flying out of the freight car. Thomas and Kana had won the soda cup. <laughs> <coughs> their team work had paid it off working together put us on the right track said Kana in the end it doesn't matter if we go fast as long as we go together it's the end bye We are going to read Percy's New Friends from Thomas and Friends series. It was a very busy day on Soda. All the engines huffed and puffed as they walked except for Percy. Percy was not busy. He wanted to play, but all the other engines were too busy to play with Percy.
Keepers leap off to sadly to random dogs. At the dogs, a noisy bird was squawking loudly on Cranky's arm. Hello, Percy, said Cranky. This is my friend, Seagull. And an idea flew into Percy's funnel. I could make friends with animals too, thought Percy. And he clattered away to make some new friends. The noise scared Seagull and he flew away. Not so loud, Percy, warned Cranky, but Percy did not hear. Percy puffed into the woods. He saw a rabbit. With a wish and a whoosh and a hoot and a toot, Percy rushed to make friends. But the rabbit turned tail and raced away into the bushes. Farther down the track, Percy saw some squirrels. With a wish and a whoosh and a hoot and a toot, Percy rushed to make friends. But the squirrels scurried away up a tree. Percy chuffed down through the woods until he saw a bird. Again he rushed to make friends, but the bird squawked and flew away. Percy was puzzled. Why didn't the animals want to be his friends? Suddenly, there was the roar of an engine and the weep of a warning whistle. Bust my buffers! cried a terrified Percy. It was Gordon pulling the express. Percy shook from funnel to foot place the as Gordon thundered past. Thomas saw what happened. Are you okay, Percy? Okay, he asked Percy. I was scared. Gordon is big and I'm only little. <gasps> then an idea bubbled up in Percy's boiler. Percy set off back through the woods. This time Percy puffed slowly and carefully. Soon he saw the bird. Hello, said Percy quietly. Cheep, cheep. They played the bird and he flew onto Percy's buffer. Percy puffed on carefully and calmly. Next he saw the squirrels. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Squirrel, he said softly. I didn't mean to scare you. The squirrels leapt onto Percy's buffer too. Finally, Percy saw the rabbit again. I'm sorry, said Percy. I was too loud before. The rabbit twitched its nose and hopped up next to the squirrels. Percy puffed proudly on. He was the happiest engine on soda with all his new friends. The end. Hope you all liked watching this book. Please subscribe to watch more videos. Bye. We are going to read Thomas and Friends Bubble Trouble.
Mr. Bubbles, a clown show was in town. Mr. Bubbles could blow the biggest bubbles anyone had ever seen. All the engines wished with excitement except Thomas. He had a broken funnel and he felt glum. Mm. While Thomas' funnel was being mended, he had to wear a spare funnel. But it was big and red and very ugly. Thomas felt silly wearing the big red funnel. The fat controller had an important job for Thomas. He was to take Mr. Bubbles' special bubble mixture to Knackford Station for the show that night. Go carefully, Thomas, warned the fat controller. You must not spill any. The fat controller went in his car with Mr. Bubbles. They would meet Thomas at Knapford Station. Thomas huffed noisily and set off. He was grumpy because he did not like his big red funnel. Soon Thomas came to a road crossing. Gordon was there too. That's a funny funnel, laughed Gordon. Thomas huffed crossly and raced away. He forgot about being careful. The bubble mixture splashed and sploshed down to the road. Right in front of the fat controller's car. The car skidded and skated on the bubble mixture and slid into a muddy ditch. Slow down, Thomas! shouted the fat controller. But Thomas did in here. Then Thomas came to a bridge. Henry was there too. That's a funny funnel, hooted Henry. Thomas not a lovely and sped on. The bubble mixture splashed and splashed onto the road below. Right in front of the fat controller's car again. The car skidded and skated on the bubble mixture and slid into a pond. My bubble mixture, cried Mr. Bubbles. But Thomas hadn't noticed. When Thomas arrived at Knapford Station, the fat controller was very cross. Mr. Bubbles was sad. There was no bubble mixture left for the show. Thomas was sorry. I felt I'll fetch some more and I'll get back in time for the show. He promised. Thomas raced off to collect the new bubble mixture. However, this time he puffed as quickly but as carefully as he could. Just as the show began, Thomas chuffed into Knapford Station with a new bubble mixture. Hooray! cheered the children. Watch his funny funnel, they thought. Thomas was part of the clown show. <laughs> Mr. Bubbles laughed and blew an enormous bubble. Thomas tooted happily. He was pleased with his funny red funnel after all. The end. Hope you all enjoyed watching this. Please subscribe to watch more videos. Until then, bye. Hello, everybody. Today we are going to read Thomas and Friends Railway Race Day, a lift to flap sound book with 10 amazing different sounds that we'll be exploring throughout this book. So let's read Thomas. Percy and James are excited about the day's big event, a horse race at the Scottish Castle. Thomas, says Sir Toffham Hat. 
You'll be fighting for horses. James, you'll take the spectators to the stadium. And Percy, you'll deliver the fireworks. Percy bursts out of his out of his shed before to Sir Toshbrand finishes. He can hardly wait. Thomas arrives at Knapford Station, eager to meet the horses. But they are nowhere to be found. I've got to find the vase horses and get them to the castle. Says Thomas, or there won't be any vase. And look, it's the fireworks. While, while James takes passengers to the castle, Thomas sees Percy's fireworks, but not Percy. Where could he be? Thomas wonders. Thomas asks Harold to lend a hand. The helpful hol helicopter volunteers to carry pet Percy's load and to look for the lost resources. Harold flies off with the fireworks. From his bird's eye view, he spots Percy. The eager engine chugs along, pulling the missing horses towards the Scottish castle. Harold zips back to tell Thomas everything is okay. The horses are on their way. Thomas and James meet Percy and the horses. the castle. I'm sorry I did your job, Thomas, says Percy. I was so excited, I mixed up Sir Topham's hat's instructions. That's okay, says Thomas. The important thing is that all the tasks were finished. I say it's a job well done, says Sir Topham Hat. Let the race begin. And look, it's all of the fans. And the fireworks. Wow, what an amazing book we have just read there. I'm sure you all would have loved this book of Thompson Friends Railway Race Day. An amazing Liffa Flat book. I'm sure you all would have loved this. And if you did, please subscribe so we can explore so many more different new videos all together. So, bye for now. Today we are going to read The Runaway Engine from Thomas and Friends collection of books. It has lots of flaps to lift and yeah, pop out crash at the end. So please keep watching till the end. There is a surprise.
form workers. Thomas, the tank engine, liked to go fast, faster and even faster. Slow down, Thomas, cried his driver. But Thomas couldn't stop. Can you see the barn? Chickens, cockerel, scarecrow, cows. Shall we lift this and see? Yay! Squack, squack, squack. Thomas' driver tried to apply the brakes, but they were jammed. Thomas pushed through the station without stopping. Can you see the watermelons on the truck are spilling out? Here is the platform, guard, station, stop signal. Look out! Call the guard. It's a runaway engine. There is a go signal. Thomas steamed down the tracks. His brakes were on fire and sparks flew everywhere. Up ahead, Percy was chucking straight towards him. Slow down, Thomas, Percy cried. They are trying to show the red flag. Means they should stop. Whew. They turned the track, so now safe. At the level crossing, the gate was down. Bertie, the bus was crossing the tracks. Oh, help, help, cried, cried Thomas. Oh, look, the, all the cows are scared. Moo, moo, they are trying to run away from the track. All the workmen and the people here are trying to see what is happening. Suddenly, Harold, the helicopter, whisked above. Turn on to the siding, he called. Look, Bertie's at the level crossing. Oh, this is such a critical situation. <gasps> Crash! Thomas crashed through the fence and the straw went flying everywhere. Good thing in her all. Well then, Thomas said the driver, nobody is hurt. Now we are going to the steamworks straight away to get your brakes fixed. There is no loss of lives, but there are loss of watermelons and straws and brakes. Ooh. Hope you all enjoyed seeing the pop out surprise at the end. Isn't it? It's really nice. The end. See you all soon on another interesting book. Until then, bye. Please subscribe to watch more videos. Today we are going to read 10 Little Engines from Thomas and Friends books. Count to 10 with Thomas and Friends children. Ten little engines living on soda, enjoying fun and adventurous galore. Nine little engines straining at the weight. Poof! Hiss! Goodbye, peeps Rosie. Now there are. Eight. Eight little engines due in at eleven. Splish, splash. Goodbye, peeps. Hello. Now there are seven. Seven little engines, one in a fix. Oops, bump. Goodbye, peeps, Rebecca. Now there are six, six little
little engines are quick to arrive. Toot toot. Goodbye, peeps James. Now there are five. Five little engines going to the show. Goodbye, peeps Emily. Eepy. Now there are four. Four little engines happy as can be. Moo. Goodbye, peeps Percy. Bye. Now there are three. Three little engines heading to the zoo. Goodbye, peeps Nia. Oh, Ooh. now there are two, two little engines, their hard work is done. Goodbye, peeps Gordon. Now there is one, one little engine has come so far. He wonders where all his engine friends are. Ten little engines all back in the shed. Good night everyone. Time to go to bed. Hope you had fun. Counting backwards from 10 to 1. See you soon. Bye bye. Please subscribe to our channel to watch more videos. Hi children. Today we are going to read Busy Bees. From Thomas and Friends collection of books. Thomas and Friends, Busy Bees. It was a sunny day on soda. Thomas had a delivery waiting at Brendan Dogs. Some little wooden houses for former trotter. Who lives in these houses? Thomas asked Hero. These are beehives said Hero. Inside, the bees are making honey. I'll puff faster than fast to deliver the bees. Thomas peeped excitedly. But Hero told him to go slowly. Take the track through the woods so the bees can rest, he said. I must pick up some Flowers from Farmer McGoggle. Hero and Thomas both sing away. Soon Thomas came to a junction. One track led through the woods. The other track led past a field of flowers. The field is prettier than the woods, thought Thomas. The bees will like that more. So Thomas passed off past the field. Suddenly Thomas heard a loud buzz. The honey bees were flying out of the hives and into the flowers. Oh no! shouted Thomas. Come back, busy bees. An idea flew into Thomas' funnel. I'll puff to form a McGuggles and pick up the flowers, he said. The bees will buzz around them, then back into their hives. Thomas picked up the flowers, then chuffed back to the field. When the bees saw the flowers, they flew out of the field. And all around Thomas, they flew into his funnel and buzzed past his buffers and whizzed around his wheels. Go away, busy bees! Thomas beached, but the bees were too busy busying too. Listen to Thomas. <laughs> Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. But the bees would not buzz off. If you won't leave me alone, Thomas speak to the bees. Then I will have to leave you alone. Thomas driver uncoupled his flatbed and Thomas clickety clacked off down the track. Thomas met Hero at the next junction. Former McGuggles flowers have gone, Hero puffed, and former trotter is still waiting for his bees. Sorry, Hero, I have done everything wrong, Thomas peeped sadly. I'll be as busy as a bee and put everything right. 
The bees were still buzzing around the flowers when Thomas collected his flat bed and wished away. The bees buzzed close behind. Then Thomas chuffed back to the field. He collected the beehives and puffed off down the track. When Thomas took the way through the dark woods, the bees began to feel cold. With a whizz, they flew into their hives. Thomas puffed all the way to Farmer Trotter's farm. The farmer was so pleased to see his bees at last. But Thomas still had Hero's flowers. Thomas sped back down the track to where Hero was waiting. You have my flowers, said Hero in surprise. I bowed them, bring back the bees. Now the bees will give Farmer Trotter the best honey and soda. There are other lovely collection of summer story books which we will continue to read. See you soon on another one. Bye. Please subscribe to our channel to watch more and more interesting videos of the lovely books. Bye. Children, today we are going to read The Sounds of Soda from Thomas and Friends collection of books. We have got loads and loads of Thomas and Friends books, Peppa Pig books, Bluey books, Hader Big books, and lots of nursery rhymes from Coco Milan. Please subscribe to our channel, watch more and more videos from her lovely collection of books. Shall we read the soda book now? Yeah. A composer was coming to Soda to write music for a bass band concert. Thomas had been chosen to show him around. The great composer wanted to hear the sounds of soda to help him write his tune. But what are the sounds of soda? Thomas wondered. Thomas listened carefully. He heard birds, animals and the sea. Those must be the sounds of soda, he thought. Then with a wish and a whoosh, Emily puffed past. She was very noisy. The composer won't be able to hear the sounds of sounds of Thora, thought Thomas. I'll have to take him somewhere where there aren't any engines. Thomas puffed to Napford Station, where the great composer was waiting. I'm here to take you to the sounds of soda, sir. Thomas peeped proudly. Wonderful, boomed the composer. I'll write my special tune as we puff along. First, Thomas puffed to a gurgling stream. Fish splish splashed the water. Here are the sounds of soda. He said the composer listened. Then there was a loud huff. It was Gordon pumping his pistons. Shh! Gordon, Miss Thomas, the composer can't hear the sounds of soda. Next, Thomas went to the whispering woods. The leaves rustled and the bats sung. The composer listened. Then came a rattle and a clatter. It was Mavis. Shh, Mavis. Sting Thomas. The composer can't hear the sounds of soda. As Thomas wished away, he wished all his friends were in so loud. The composer would never be able to write his tune. Suddenly an idea flew into Thomas' funnel. The quarry is closed today, so none of my best friends will be there. He peeped, so Thomas puffed to the quarry. Here are the sounds of soda, said Thomas. The composer listened. The quarry was silent. There aren't any sounds, he said. Then there was a loud peep, 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 peep. From, it was James' whistle. Shh, James, Thomas tutored. Puffing away, but James chased after him, blowing his whistle loudly. Beep, 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 beep. Then there was trouble. Thomas was chuffing towards a pile of fallen stones. Thomas, look out! Wished James. Thomas broke, break his coaches, bumped. The composer sheets of music flew out of the window and blew away. My special tune, he cried. Thomas felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir, screamed Thomas sadly. But how did you write a tune? My noisy friend spoiled all the sounds of soda. 
Thomas, your noisy friends are the sounds of soda, said the composer. But now I don't have my tune for the concert. An idea bubbled up in Thomas Boiler. He wished away to find his friends. Later that day, Thomas and his friends puffed into the town hall. The fat controller was there with the brass band. He was surprised to see all of Thomas' friends arrive. I am sorry we are late, said the composer to the fat controller, but I think this will be worth the wait. The composer pointed his baton at the brass band, then at the engines. The brass band began to play and Emily wished and wished. Gordon huffed and pumped with his questions. Mary rattled and clattered her flatbed on Thomas and James. Peep, peep, peep their whistles. It was a wonderful sound. Thomas was so much proud to have such musical friends. The end. That was really interesting. Bye. Hi friends. Today we are going to read Fire Engine Flynn from Thomas and Friends Books Collections. Shall we read? Fire Engine Flynn. Please subscribe to our channel to watch more and more interesting videos of children's books. We have got loads and loads of books on Thomas and Friends, Peppa Pig, Coco Melon, Louie, lovely, lovely other books. Shall we start reading this book now? Yeah? Flying! The red fire engine was at the soda rescue center. Diesel pulled up beside him. Good morning, said Flying. It isn't a good morning, on Diesel. I'm very busy. You're not busy. I'm waiting to get busy, said Flame. He always wanted to be really useful. Just then the rescue bell rang. ding a -ling! Stand by fire engine, Flame. Boomed Rocky. That is the blue engine. Flying didn't want to hear any more. He sounded his siren loudly. Wow! I'm ready to save the blue engine. He called with a honk of his horn. He was off in a flash. There is the blue engine in trouble. Puffed Flying as he raced down the track. When he saw Edward the blue engine, he screeched to a top. Edward, I have come to save you. Fire engine flying to the rescue, he said. Flying fired his water cannons. Water oosh all over Edward and Edward's driver too. Flying, what are you doing? Edward cried out, I'm not on fire. Oh, I'm sorry, Edward. He felt very slowly. It must be another blue engine that's in trouble, said Flying. I must be hurry to find it. And Flying rushed away. Gordon and was at Morgan Station. He was picking up the fat controller and Dover hat. When Flying saw Gordon, the blue engine, he screeched to a stop. Gordon, I have come to save you, he cried. Fire engine flying to the rescue. Flying fired his water cannons. Water splashed all over Gordon and the fat controller. I am not on fire, Flying, Gordon grumbled. Flying had tried to save the wrong engine again. He felt very silly indeed. I'm sorry, said Flying. It must be another blue engine that is in trouble. I have to find it. And Flying whisked away. I wish I'd have waited to hear what change needed help, said Flying sadly. Flying found another blue engine at the diesel works. It was Thomas. His Firefox was on fire. Flying fired his water cannons, but no water came out. Flying had used it all up. Sorry, Thomas. Flying said sadly, I didn't wait to hear which blue engine I had to save and now I can't save you. Then Flying had a great idea. Diesels, he said, you will save Thomas. 
So the diesel drivers poured water on Thomas' flaming firebox and with a fizz the fire went out. Flying Trundle back to the rescue center where he was filled up with water. He waited to be busy once more. The rescue bell rang again. An engine needs help. Boom, Rocky. And this time Flying wanted to hear which engine it was. The end. Beep, beep. That was an interesting one. Isn't it? Flying should not have rushed so much without hearing which engine needed help. That was really a good learning. Bye-bye, children. See you soon on another book. Please subscribe to our channel to watch more and more children's books. Hi, children. Today we are going to read the book Thomas Train from Thomas and Friends Collection of Books. Please remember to like our video if you like it and also remember to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos from us. Thomas Train Thomas often grumbled because he was not allowed to pull passenger trains. The other engines laughed. You were too impatient, they said. You would be sure to leave something behind. Rubbish, said Thomas crossly. You just wait, I'll show you. One night, Thomas and Henry were alone. Henry was ill. The men worked hard, but he didn't get any better. Henry usually pulled the first train in the morning and Thomas will always get his coaches ready. He would fetch them from the yard and bring them to the platform. If Henry is ill, thought Thomas, perhaps I shall pull his train. In the morning, Thomas ran to find the coaches. Come along, come along, he first. There is plenty of time, there is plenty of time, grumbled the coaches. Thomas took them to the platform and wanted to run around in front at once. But his driver wouldn't let him. Don't be impatient, Thomas, he said. So Thomas waited and waited. The people got in, the guard and the station master walked up and down and the porters banged the doors and still Henry didn't come. Thomas got more and more got excited every minute. What's the matter? asked the fat controller. The station master told him about Henry. Find another engine, the fat controller ordered. Hurrying out to the platform. There is only Thomas, said the station master. Thomas, you will have to do it, said the fat controller. Be quick now. So Thomas ran round to the front and back down on the coaches, ready to start. Don't be impatient, Thomas, said his driver. Wait until everything is ready. But Thomas was too excited to listen to your word, he said. Nobody knows what happened next. Perhaps they forgot to couple Thomas to the train. Perhaps Thomas was too impatient to wait until they were ready. Or perhaps his driver pulled the lever by mistake. But somehow Thomas started. People waved and shouted at him, but he didn't stop. They are waving because I'm such a splendid engine, Thomas thought. Importantly, Henry says it's hard to pull trains. But I think it's easy. Hurry, 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 puffed Thomas, pretend to be like Gordon. As he passed the faster signal box, Thomas saw the signal man waving and shouting at him. They are pleased to see me, he thought. They have never seen me pulling a train before. And he whistled back to them, beep, beep. But soon, Thomas came to a danger signal. Oh, bother, he thought. I must stop and I was going so nicely too. What a nuisance signal, sir. 
and he blew an angry beep beep on his whistle. On the signal man I came running up. Thomas, he said, what are you doing? I am pulling a train, said Thomas proudly. Can't you see? Where are your coaches then? asked the signal man. Thomas looked back. Why, bless me, he said, if we haven't left them behind. Yes, said the signal man. You would better go back and fetch them. Poor Thomas was sad. He nearly cried. At the station, all the passengers were talking at once. They were telling the fat controller, the station master and the guard what a bad railway it was. Suddenly, they saw Thomas coming back into the station, looking very sad. When everyone saw how sad and sorry he was, they couldn't be cross anymore. So they coupled Thomas to the train and this time he really pulled it. Thomas worked very hard all day long and he wasn't impatient at all. You have been a very useful engine, said his driver. Well done. But for a long time afterwards, the other engines laughed at Thomas. Look! They said, that is Thomas who wanted to pull a train but forgot about the coaches. That's the end. Hope you all enjoyed reading this book with us. See you soon on another book. Thomas often grumbles because he is not allowed to pull passenger trains. So when Henry falls ill, Thomas is asked to help. He is very excited but he is so impatient that something he is bound to go wrong. Yeah, he forgot the coaches. Bye-bye children. See you soon on another one. Please subscribe to our channel to watch more videos from us. We have got lots of books on Hey Dougie, Bluey, Peppa Pig, Thomas and Friends and Paw Patrol, Peter Rabbit. Lots of little library books and puzzle books. Sure you will enjoy them all. Bye bye. Hi children. Today we are going to read Thomas and Bertie, which including Thomas and Bertie and Thomas' birthday. Shall we read it? Please remember to press the like button if you like our video and also subscribe to our channel to watch more videos from us. Thomas and Bertie. One day, Thomas was at a junction when Bertie the bus came into view. I can go faster than you, boasted Thomas, letting off steam. Okay, I will race you, said Bertie. The drivers agreed and in a flash, they were off. Thomas puffed loudly as he pulled away from the station. Thomas hurried along as quickly as he could, but Bertie was too fast. He is a long way ahead, a long way ahead, called Annie and Clarabel. Then Bertie had to stop at a level crossing and Thomas sailed by. Goodbye, Bertie, he shouted as he whooshed past. Hurry, 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 panted Thomas as he headed towards the bridge. Then he whistled in surprise as Bertie crossed in front of him. At the next station, the signal was up and Thomas had to stop. Oh dear, oh dear, he gasped. The signal soon changed and Thomas rumbled over the bridge. There was Bertie stuck at a red light. We will beat Bertie yet, Thomas puffed. Suddenly, the lights changed and Bertie shot ahead, tooting loudly, quick, 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 urged Annie and Clarabel. And soon Thomas and Bertie were racing alongside each other. But when Thomas reached his full speed, Bertie just wasn't fast enough. Thomas raced ahead into a tunnel, leaving Bertie behind. 
Thomas raced through the last channel as Bertie struggled up the steep hill. Thomas rushed into the station, whistling proudly. I have done it! Hooray! The passengers shouted. Three cheers for Thomas! Hip hip! Hooray! And Bertie Bear came in, they cheered him too. Well done, Thomas, said Bertie. You are a really useful engine. Thomas Birthday Today it is Thomas Birthday. Henry is rushing to Thomas' party when he has to stop by the circus. Whoosh! Henry lets off steam and frightens one of the elephants. Whoosh! The elephant squirts water all over Henry in return. Poor Henry will have to get dry again for the party. Pepsi is going to Thomas' party too. But as he is passing the harbour, he decides to have a look at the sea. His trucks bump him forward so that he is closer to the water. Smash! Oh dear! The trucks have bumped him too hard and he falls into the river. The fat controller is not pleased with Percy. You are a very silly engine, he says. Now you might be late for Thomas' party. James is in a fix. On the way to the party, the naughty trucks push him too fast and his brakes don't work. He can't stop. Crash! The workmen find him stuck in a field of cow. Help! He whistles. I hope I get to Thomas' party on time. Thomas is so excited about his birthday party that he can't stop rushing. By the time he arrives at the viaduct, he is very hot and thirsty. We will have to stop and get some water, Thomas, says his driver. Let's hope it doesn't make you late for your own birthday party. Luckily, Percy, Henry and James have all arrived at Thomas' party safe and sound. When Thomas puffs into the station, everyone cheers. I didn't think you would get here on time, says the fat controller. But you are a really useful engine after all. Happy birthday, Thomas. That's the end. Thomas and Bertie, Thomas' birthday. Who will win the race between Thomas and Bertie? And will the engines get on time to Thomas' birthday on time? Yes, they did. Some of them, isn't it? Hope you all enjoyed reading this book with us. See you soon on another one. Please subscribe to our channel to watch more videos from us. Until then, bye. Hi children. Today we are going to read Thomas and the Easter Egg Hunt from Thomas and Friends collection of books. It's Easter time on soda. It's Easter time on soda. And Thomas is on his way. Choo -choo 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 -choo. Its wheels are wearing quickly. It's the great egg hunt today. I can't be late. Look high and low for chocolate eggs. The fat controller tells the team. Engines ready? Then time to go. And they are off in a oosh of steam. Let's Go Stevies! Soon Thomas reaches the station and James peeps in delight. He has found an egg among the flowers. So colorful and bright. Well done. Well done James. Bounce my buffers. Smiles Percy as he pulls in the siding. There in Harold's cockpit, an Easter egg is hiding. I have found one. Thomas stops at Smaran Junction. And Charlie peeps. Look high. An egg is on the signal post. 
Bright blue just like the sky. Good work, Charlie. When Thomas arrives at Brendan Dogs, he starts to take a look as the fat controller points to an egg on Cranky's hook. Another egg. Next stop is Nafford Station where Emily has found the last egg on the station clock. High above the ground. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Well then, Thomas and his friends, the great egg hunt is done. And now it's time to share the eggs and have lots more Easter fun. Five eggs. One, two, three, four, five. Every engine on Soda knows it's not about how fast he goes or whatever. He is big or small. There are jobs for engine and for all. All the engines love Easter. This is about a very special day on the island of Soda. The great Easter egg hunt. Hope you all enjoyed reading the book with us. See you soon on another book. Until then, bye. Please subscribe to our channel to watch more videos from us. Hi children. Today we are going to read the book. Percy's Chocolate Crunch. A day out with Thomas. Thomas and friends. Percy's Chocolate Crunch. The fat controller's engines love being shiny and clean. Percy often has the dirtiest work to do. But he likes to be clean as much as any other engine. So washdowns are important to Percy. One day, the fat controller had some bad news. Due to a water shortage, no engine shall have more than one washdown a day. Usefulness before cleanliness. Percy was upset. I get very dirty. I need washdowns. Gordon only has them to feel important. I am important, sniffed Gordon. I am an x force engine. You are a pouty buffer, Percy. No, I'm not, wished Percy on each after way. That day, Percy was loading coal trucks. He was trying extra hard to stay clean. But the trouble soundtracks were being naughty. As Percy pushed them down the coal chute, they rolled forward. Before Percy could stop, he was under the chute. Coal dust blew everywhere. Oh no! coughed Percy. I'm filthy! Percy felt awful, but he knew he had to carry on. On the way to Brandon Dogs, the troublesome trucks teased poor Percy even more. Clickety clack, don't look back. Dirty Percy is on our track. Be quiet. Percy snapped. When Percy arrived at the dogs, he was very upset. From now on, I'm only doing work where I won't get dirty, he said, briefing the trucks into a siding. Harold, the helicopter was delivering medical supplies to the dogs. There was a big pile of cinders and ashes next to him. Just as Percy passed by, Harold took off. He blew cinders and ashes all over everything, including Percy. Not again, Percy called. I want to wash down. Usefulness before cleanliness, his driver reminded him. I want to be useful somewhere where I can't get any dirtier, Percy huffed. There's a load of sugar going to the chocolate factory. We could take the sugar trucks. Sugar, said Percy. That's nice and clean. Percy was pleased. 
but he didn't know that earlier that day a leaky truck had spilled oil on the track. When he approached the chocolate factory, his driver applied the brakes, but Percy's wheels just skidded on the oil rails. Oh no! He crashed through the buffers and disappeared into the factory. Oh, Percy made a lot of noise, but the only thing he crashed into was a big tub of chocolate. Yuck! I have never been this dirty. As he steamed out of the other end of the factory, he was covered from funnel to firebox in sticky gooey chocolate. Back at the sheds, all the other engines thought it was very funny. Haha, <laughs> you look good enough to eat, quoted Thomas. Pudding Percy, teased James. Hmm, <laughs> said the stern sounding voice. It was the fat controller. You have had a trying day, Percy, he said. Yes, sir, replied Percy from beneath the chocolate. But you have showed us all that usefulness does come before cleanliness. So you shall have your wash down and you shall have a new coat of paint. Oh, thank you, sir, exclaimed Percy. He was lost for words. Percy was beaming with delight. The end. Hope you all enjoyed reading this book with us. See you soon on another one. Until then, bye.